Hello guys and welcome to this video. This would be our third video in this series. So if you haven't seen my previous videos, do check them out. So in this video, we'll see how we can deploy our API on Heroku in the simplest way possible. A brief about Heroku. Heroku is widely relied upon platform as a service offering that enables developers to carry out hassle-free application deployments, scaling and management. Heroku runs applications through virtual containers known as Dynos. So this was overview of Heroku and without wasting much time, let's start the video. So the only thing you'll need is a GitHub repository to connect with Heroku and of course you need a Heroku account for that. Now let's see what all changes we have to make in our project. So first and foremost, we need to make a requirements.txt. So to make a requirements.txt, we write this command pip freeze requirements.txt. I'll just execute this. As you can see, it is executed. And if we see this requirements.txt, as you can see, all the packages that I have used for this project have been listed here. So what it does is it will keep all the installed packages name with version installed for the current project. Now you may wonder why we need to do that. What Heroku do is install all those libraries with specific version to avoid errors. And we know that with every update, there are some changes in library. Let's take an example to understand this. If I'm using a XYZ function of a library and developer of that library in future decides to remove that function in the next version. Now, if I want to use or try the same function XYZ with a new update, it won't be possible because it might create an error because th that function won't be there. So it's very important to have requirements.txt. So next important thing we should have is prop file. Heroku apps include a prop file that specifies the command that are executed by the app on startup. I'll just write what should be there in a prop file. Now I'll enter a prop file. As you can see, if prop file don't have an extension. Now we have to write this command to tell our Heroku to start this server. So web here is to know Heroku that it is a web process type followed by a command what we used to write in testing server. That is ubicon, the file name, then the app which is inside the file. And instead of reload, it takes which port and host it wants to work with. So that's all changes we have to make in our project. Make sure you commit all these changes in your GitHub repository. So now let's deploy it on Heroku. For this, of course, you need an Heroku account for this. So make sure you have it. Now what you should do is give a good name for your app. I'll choose the region as Europe. So I'll name my app as Diabetes Prediction Fast API. Once you decide what name you want to choose. Now once you have entered your name for application, press Create App. So basically there are three ways to connect. So I'll be choosing connect to GitHub. I'll connect my repository. Make sure you connect your repository. I'll press connect. It's connecting. Make sure you enable automatic deploys. So whenever there is change in our GitHub code, it deploys automatically again. So if a new change or new feature is added, the same thing is added on Heroku automatically. So make sure you enable automatic deploys. So I'll be choosing my main branch. As you can see, the build has started. As you can see, all the packages that were there in requirements.txt are getting installed. As you can see, it has done its process and here it's our website. If we go here, as you can see, it perfectly works fine. Our root page, our landing page was hello world. If I go in docs, so if we go in docs, as you can see, we are getting our swagger UI. So it's the same thing. As you saw how easy it was to deploy on fast API application on Heroku. Now, if you get any error, make sure that you check logs. You can check logs with command line Heroku. Make sure you have it. Now, what we'll do is try our predict endpoint. As you can see, we are getting a JSON object. Got an answer, which is perfectly fine. So this was it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you guys have any query, do let us know down below. Please make sure that you watch my previous videos too to understand all this and subscribe to this channel. I'll see you all in the next video. Till then, bye bye.